بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ صدر محمد النبی نمی و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم تسلیما کثیرا ربنا آتنا من لدن کا رحمہ و هی لنا من امرنا رشدہ السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ It's a great honor to be in this blessed and luminous company الحمد للہ و شکر للہ in this blessed time towards the end of the month of Rajab and reflecting on the supreme and amazing night of the Isra wal Mi'raj, the night journey in the heavenly ascension of the best of creation, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, obviously that that night is intimately connected and interwoven with the Holy Land itself. And so uh, as we commence, we'll just as a uh, tatimma of the beautiful du'a of Qari Amr will make a fatiha for faraj, relief for the uh, believers, the Muslims in the Holy Land and in all parts of the earth, al-fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. And that the Isra wal Miraj is directly connected with the notion of tribulation. Because in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the Blessed Sirah, this is the main event after what's called Amul Huzn, the year of sorrow, in which there was very painful. Uh, event, uh, occurrences in the life of the Prophet وسلم, that he lost Abu Talib. Abu Talib, of course, was the fatherly figure, uh, very much like a father. And in fact, in the early part of the seerah, when they went to Buhaira in Sham, he, when he was asked, he said, this is my son. And Buhaira said, it can't be your son. And he said, okay, it's my nephew. So the, there was a fatherly connection and according to the text of the Qur'an that the Prophet loved Abu Talib ahbabta, that you do not get to guide those, everyone that you love. So the one that you love, the, the dominant tafsir is that this was re revealed after the passing of Abu Talib who died without clearly and outwardly accepting Islam. And so, man ahbabta is a reference, according to most scholars, to Abu Talib. So the love that the Prophet had وسلم, is like the love of a child for the father, for the parent. So, and also the political protection, so the outward protection that Abu Talib provided for the Prophet وسلم, according to the tribal structure of the Arab and the Quraysh, that this was lost now. And so this was a devastating, painful occurrence in the prior the Amun Huzn. And then of course, the solace and comfort of his blessed heart in the home, Lady Khadija radiallahu anha, Khadija bint Khawailid, uh, our mother in Iman, may Allah ha, uh, be pleased with her, and that we know also that the Prophet had tremendous love for her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that years later, according to Sahih Muslim and other collections, that he, when, he, when the, uh, a sheep would be slaughtered, he would instruct the companions to gift the meat distributed amongst the friends of Khadija. So he, he would remember her years later, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, throughout his life. And our mother Aisha, she had this ghayra, it's a natural part of the soul. So she said, I never had ghayra for any of the women except for Khadija. And she mentioned this incident, that the giving the meat years later. And so she, once she couldn't help but ask, and she a little bit expressed her emotions. And she said, why Khadija? And the Prophet says, inni ruziqtu hubbaha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Verily, I was given as a provision from Allah love of Khadija. Inni ruziqtu hubbaha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So hub of Abu Talib, hub of Khadija, tremendous love, both of them taken, according to some narrations, within a few days, three days, three days later. And then he is in a state, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of really seeking uh, support, political support. Of course, his first uh, priority is to always invite to Islam. But he's also then looking for support because Abu Lahab is next in line uh, uh, to, in Banu Hashim to provide protection 
and he just gives it nominally. So he really gives a pass for all of the, uh, you know, just violent and sordid, tyrannical, you know, misguided, the most misguided people on earth to really start abusing him to a new level, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he goes to Ta'if of where Bani Thaqif is. And at Ta'if, you know, he invites them with his sublime character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They mock him, they ridicule him, they use sarcasm against him, and then uh, they have their the, their children and their slaves, two categories that the Prophet especially loved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He loved children, he loved slaves, he loved the people who were of the lower social strata of any of the community, the people in the outward. And so the, the, the poor people and these kind of, and so he, uh, that they had them line up and throw stones at him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Until his blessed body, his legs were bleeding, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so in that moment, and he was once asked in, uh, later, years later by our mother Aisha, what was your most difficult moment? And he alluded to that day. So it was his most difficult moment, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he makes this sublime dua to Allah Ta'ala. And arguably, it's the, arguably it's the uh, most profound expression of the purity of slavehood to Allah. Just the abs, the safa, just the and that he says, Allah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma inni ashku ilayka ashku da'fa quwati. That O Allah, to you alone do I complain of the weakness of my strength. And the paucity of my resources. I have no more strategies left. I have no more planning left. I've exhausted my plans. And how I've been just mistreated by everybody, by people. People have completely made me, you know, treated me so horribly. Uh, uh, Oh, most merciful of those who show mercy. He never doubted Allah's mercy. He never doubted the attributes of Allah's beauty, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just recognizing Allah is still, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, Anta Rabbul Mustadafeen. You are especially the Lord of the weak, of those who have been, who are oppressed on earth. Wa Anta Rabbi, and you are my Lord. And one of the supreme descriptions that we will highlight inshallah that in Surat Al-Isra because Allah Ta'ala describes him as Abdihi Subhanahu Alladhi Asra Bi Abdihi and so the, this is the description according to many scholars is the, is the Ashraf Yani Awsaf it's the most sublime description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's in the context of this most sublime event in his life look right before he's expressing this Ubudiyya Anta Rabbi like Oh Allah, you are my Lord. Anta Rabbul Mustadafin wa Anta Rabbi ila man takiruni. You know, to whom will you entrust me? And this is also a principle that we want to highlight tonight in terms of the Isra wal Miraj because of tawakkul. Ila man takiruni. To whom will you? Ila ba'idin yatajahamuni. To uh, someone far off who will abuse me and mistreat me. O ila aduin malaktahu amri. Or, or to an enemy. You, you sh will you entrust me to an enemy that you have that you have given him power over me? Subhanallah. That that unto Allahumma anta malikul mulk tu tu mulk man tasha. Allah is the ruler of every ruler. Allah is the king of every king. There is no one on earth with power, whether a good or a bad person, except that Allah gave him that power. It's an ibtila. It's a test from Allah Taala. So he never lost sight of. The divine supreme power, the qudra, wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah, even in in the face of tyranny, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, ila ba'idin o ila aduin malakto amri innam yakun bika alayya ghadabun fala ubali. So long as you're not angry with me, so long as you're not angry with me, then I don't mind. Then I don't mind. Walakin. But your afia to have well-being, 
to have safety and security. This is osa'u. This is easier for me. This is more expansive for me. وَلَكِنْ عَافِيَتُكْ هِيَ أَوْسَوَ لِأَعُوذُ بِنُورِ وَجِكَ الَّذِي أَشْرَقَتْ لَهُ الظُّلُمَاتِ I seek refuge in the light of your countenance. أَعُوذُ بِنُورِ وَجْهِكْ I seek refuge in the light of your countenance. And on the Isra wal Mi'raj, he will see that light, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I seek refuge in the light of your very... And wajhuhu dhatuhu. The ulama say the, the waj of Allah is the that of Allah Ta'ala. It's the very entity of Allah Himself. And so he's seeking refuge in the light of Allah's very being, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'udhu bi nuri wa ladhi ashraqat lahu dhulumat, that it gives light to all darknesses. All darknesses are illumined by the light of Allah ta'ala. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the illuminator of the heavens and earth. Any good, any light in this earth, it's a direct expression of the divine light. It's a direct translation of the divine light. It's a direct manifestation of the divine light. Uh, that Ibn Atayla says, al kawn kulluhu dhulma. You know, the, this world is just darkness. Wa innama anaruhu dhuhur al haqfihi. But the only thing that gives light is when Allah is manifested therein, when Allah is remembered therein, when the people, when the people who love Allah gather therein, when Allah is worshipped therein, when when people interact with each other through the divine light with beautiful character. That's when there's light in the world. Uh, uh, so this light that uh, gives light to all darknesses. وَالسَّلُهَا عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And by it, all affairs in this life and the hereafter are rectified and made sound. They're correct. مِنْ أَنْ يَنْزِلَ بِغَدَبُكَ أَوْ تَحِلَّ عَلَيَا سَخَتُكَ لَكَ الْعُطْبَ حَتَّى تَرْضَى That I seek refuge in, in this supreme light of Allah, that anything of your anger or wrath descend upon me لَكَ الْعُطْبَ حَتَّى تَرْضَى you, ha- you can blame until you are well pleased you can blame until you are well pleased وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِكَ and there is no power, there is no might, there is no strength, there is no ability except through Allah except through Allah Ta'ala and this is uh, the, of the highest meanings of Tawheed because on the Isra wal Miraj according to Tabarani that one of the things that the Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, teaches the Prophet sallam, tell your ummah to plant the ghirasul jannah the grass of jannah and what's the grass of jannah ghirasul jannah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah we say it in good times we say it in bad times it's actually a protection for blessings to say masha allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and then in difficult times la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and so this is then this supreme dua which is really the answer of the problem of suffering this problem in ph- philosophy of the problem of suffering and evil just this dua alone answers that question because as our ulama say that it's turning from a third person abstract conception of the issue to a second person direct interaction with the divine through slavehood. The Islamic solution for the problem of suffering in the world is we turn to Allah as a, it's a practical, it's practical intellect, not abstract theoretical intellect. It's that practical turn to Allah through one's slavehood. And so the Prophet is answering the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his uh, in the time of his life of the most suffering Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that even then on the way home because oh, right after that Allah Ta'ala sends an indication that even this particular mission to go to Ta'if was not a failure it was not even a it was not a even a worldly political failure because this young boy Adas a Christian boy is sent by two of the Quraysh enemies who used to abuse the Prophet ﷺ. They felt a moment of sorrow because here's Thaqafi, you know, Bani Thaqif, they're not even Qurashi. And they've just abused, so that prideful sense kicked in. So they said, go give him some fresh grapes because they witnessed it. And then he, the boy comes, Adas, and he, the Prophet ﷺ, Bismillah. He says, Bismillah. And the boy is a pious Christian. He says, your people don't say that. And he asks, they have a conversation, and he says, you know, What's your, and he says, where are, you fr- where are you from? And he says, Nineveh. And he says, oh, the home of Yunus, the pious Yunus ibn Matta, Jonah, son of Matthew. And he says, how do you know about Yunus ibn? He says, he says, he is my brother. He is a prophet like me. And by the end, Adas takes the shahada and he's kissing the hands and feet of the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So just the... Islam of Adas is su- sufficient for a success. 
of, of, that, of that particular mission. Uh, but on the way home also that the Prophet وسلم, the, some of the jinn hear the Qur'an and they become Muslim, a contingent of jinn. So the da'wah goes into the malakut, the, the other world of the jinn. And that this is also in Ishara because the Isra and Miraj is the night of meeting the prophets. So Allah is giving a foreshadowing. You are connected to these people. And, and so he doesn't know وسلم, he's about to meet them all. Right, and so this is you know one of the most important considerate contexts of framing our our appreciation of the of the Isra and Miraj of the brilliance of Isra and Miraj is it's it's connected to the the the, the most difficult time of his blessed life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in light of which this this principle of ubudiyah, this principle of slavehood during tribulation of realizing our slavehood during the most difficult of circumstances. Whatever our low points in life, uh, in, our, in our personal lives, uh, and then as, as a collective, as an ummah, the, the tribulations that we're going through as an ummah, to keep this in mind, to realize that the, 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 these are connected to spiritual openings. And so we ask for afia, the sunnah. Walakin afia tuka hiya usawli. Your afia is more easy for me. So we, we ask for well-being. And we take the means. The Prophet, he said, وسلم, he, had re- he had exhausted all the strategies. So he took all the strategies. He took the asbab, sallallahu he, he was never neglectful of the asbab. He took all the means at his disposal to try to deal with difficult situations, sallallahu That's from the sunnah. But when we've tried everything and now it's simply a matter of, it's out of our control. Wala hawla wala quwta illa bik. Oh Allah, to whom? And so realizing that al iftiqari Allah and that the, from Ubudiyah is expressing our need for Allah. This is what the Prophet did in the sublime dua, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, expressing his deep need for Allah Ta'ala. And that Abu Bakr al Kitani, the one of the companions of Imam Junaid, he said, Ida saha al iftiqaru Allah, saha al ghina bihi. That Ida saha al iftiqaru Allah, when one's impoverishment for Allah is real and authentic one's enrichment through Allah will be real and authentic this is the, this is a principle it's it's a it's a true principle of our religion and so to the extent that we go to Allah with empty hands, oh Allah, raising our hands, that's what the secret of dua is, just the emptiness, like a beggar. The, the abd is a beggar for Allah. Here, Allah, my, my hands are empty. I'm just showing you, I have a complete need. I'm in complete need of you, ya Allah. All of my, I, you know, sometimes you can't even enumerate your problems. You just say, Allah, Allah, you know, you know better than me. And sometimes and, 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 and sometimes it's it's so intense in the heart you don't even need to make dua. Sometimes the adab is not to do talab. Because one of the secrets of Isra and Miraj, the Prophet never asked for it. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sometimes the greatest things come with that because of but what was in his heart. No one longed for Allah more. No one had more love and longing for Allah than him. So Allah knew the state of his heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, amazing. Uh, who is our prophet? Yani we, <laughs> we uh, the greatest of our saints said we have no, we have not uh, not drops of his ocean. To, we cannot comprehend drops of his ocean. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We we don't even know how much veneration he deserves. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Isra and Miraj, that framing it through this principle of al iftiqaru ilallah Taala, and that Allah Taala begins. In Surah, Surah Al-Isra, which is Surah Bani Israel, and Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi abdihi, that glorious and exalted. So beginning with the remembrance of Allah, that the chapter begins with dhikrullah. So, and so Allah, tanzih, this is tanzih, yunazihu, Allah makes tanzih of himself, because it, the, the journey is horizontally from Blessed Mecca to the Holy Land, Jerusalem, and then up 
past the seven heavens to past the lot tree. But Allah Ta'ala begins the surah Subhan Alladhi because don't think Allah has a direction. Allah is not bound by a place. Allah is not bound by time. And so this, this journey was not to Allah physically. The journey was physical, but it was not to Allah physically. So Subhan Alladhi, like whatever we're thinking of Allah, He's far greater. And then also that just the dhikrullah, that Allah makes dhikr. Allah, the, all of the Qur'an, Allah is making dhikr. The whole Qur'an is dhikrullah. But when Allah praises Himself and glorifies Himself, when Allah Ta'ala says, Alhamdulillah, when Allah Ta'ala says, Subhan Alladhi, glory, Allah is making dhikr of Himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So either dhikrul qadim lil qadim. This is the, the remembrance of the eternal for the eternal. This is the remembrance of the eternal for the eternal. And then there's dhikrul hadith lil qadim. When we, when we say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, when we recite Quran, then we're making the, the temporal makes a dhikr of the eternal. But even that is dhikrul qadim lil qadim. Because wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. That we can't make dhikr unless Allah gives us that tawfiq. So it's still the remembrance of Allah of Himself. So the whole thing is the remembrance of Allah for Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why some of them said that the Fatiha, that Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, this is Allah's praise for Himself. We're simply reciting and echoing Allah Ta'ala's praise for Himself. So that, and, and that the dhikr is our life. This is what gives life to the heart. That the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahil Bukhari, the example of those that make dhikr of Allah and those that do not is like the example of the living and the dead. So the, uh, the first lesson from the Surah Al Isra is that Allah begins with dhikr, we have to begin with dhikr. And, and the, in Abu Dawood, كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَالْ لَا يُبْدَأُ بِالْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ فَهُوَ أَقْتَعُ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Every important matter that does not begin with Alhamdulillah is cut off from blessing. So beginning, so Allah begins the surah with dhikrullah, so we begin our important affairs with dhikrullah ta'ala. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. This is, when we're in the company of the awliya of Ahlullah, it's just flowing. It's just flowing. It's just like their oxygen. So that's the goal, to make it our oxygen. Because oxygen gives life. Just like oxygen gives life to the body. The example of the one that makes the dhikr is life. is the living and the dead. So it gives life. It's like oxygen. فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرُكُمْ So the tawfiq to make dhikr is from Allah. But then the fruit of it is Allah makes dhikr of us. So فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرُكُمْ So make remembrance of me and I shall make remembrance of you. So whenever we remember Allah Ta'ala, Allah remembers us in the, in the Mala Al-A'la, amongst the angels of the highest realm. Subhana alladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Layla, on a night. Now, the word asra means night journey. So the meaning of night is already embedded in the verb. Subhana alladhi asra. The glory be to the one that took his servant by night. So then why does Allah Ta'ala say Laylan in a night? Because the ulama say it's munakkar, it's, it's indefinite, and it shows the, because it's taqlil. So it shows that, because normally it's a journey of 40 nights. So in one night. And according to the tafsir, they actually say fi lahza. In one, it was in one moment of the night. So a time as it were, was frozen. As it were. And the bed was still warm when he came back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى To the furthest mosque. أَلَّذِي بَارَكْنَا حَوْلَى That we put barakah around it. لِنُرِيَهُ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا So that we show him from our sublime signs, wondrous signs. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Verily, he, جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ Is all hearing and all seeing. And that Imam al-Qushayri, rahimahullah, he says, أَرْسَلُهُ الْحَقُّ تَعَالَى لِيَتَعَلَّمَ أَهْلُ الْأَرْضِ مِنْهُ الْعِبَادَةِ Allah sent him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to earth so that the people of earth can learn from him how to worship Allah. ثُمَّ رَقَّاهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ But then he took him in the ascension to the heavens, 
لِيَتَعَلَّمَ مِنْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ عَلِمُ السَّلَامَ أَدَابِ الْعِبَادَةَ So that the angels could learn from him the etiquette of worship, the subtle etiquettes of worship. قَالَ تَعَالَ مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى Because Allah Ta'ala describes the adab of the Prophet ﷺ on that night. His eyes, his eyesight neither wavered nor went out of bounds. It was fixed on one that night. So all of these glorious wonders of the heavens and earth are opening and the whole time, مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى This is the adab of ibadah, even the angels are learning from him وسلم. وَمَا الْتَفَتَ يَمِينًا وَلَا شَمَالًا He did not turn neither to the right or left. مَا طَمِعَ فِي مَقَامْ وَلَا فِي إِكْرَامْ He was not seeking a station or to be, or to be uh, 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 you know, honored by creation. تَحَرَّرَ عَنْ كُلِّ طَلَبْ وَأَرَبْ تِلْكَ الْلَيْلَ He was free of, any, of anything but Allah Ta'ala on that night. And in the hadith, Allahumma إِلَيْكَ إِنْتَهَتِ الْأَمَانِ كُلُّهَا يَا صَاحِبَ الْعَافِيَةِ in the hadith that's <coughs> related in the Jami' Sagheer, that the Prophet used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O oh Allah, all hopes and desires culminate in you. Ilayka intahitil amani kulluha. All amani, any wish that, that we could have, any desire a human can have, intahat, it ends and culminates in Allah Himself. And then he says, Ya Sahib al Afia in the narration, Oh possessor of Afia, because he's asking for Afia and he taught us to always ask for Afia. So his supreme tawheed of that night, his his fixedness on his Lord on that night. And that Nam. So we know that he, the Burak was brought to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Burak is between a uh, between a donkey and a mule, and it it at each step is as far as the eye can see. And in one narration, the Burak was a little bit rough. And Jibreel to told it to, to stay still and calm because no one more noble than you has ever rid on you. And the Burak used to be rid by the prophets, peace be upon them. And so it's a, the initial indication that he's the best of all prophets. He, he's then on the Burak towards Al-Quds and uh, that on the, in Sahih Muslim on the way he passes by the grave of Hazrat Musa Salam and he's worshipping Allah in it and in making sajda. And, and that's an authentic hadith. So this is one of the proofs that the prophets are alive in their graves. And this, and this night proves it as well. Because when he arrives then and he ties the buraq on the halaqa, on the ring that all the prophets tied it on, and then he enters the masjid and he's given a choice, the two, two drinks of one container of milk, the other is wine. And Jibreel and so he chooses the milk and Jibreel says, Asabt al-fitra. You chose the fitra, the primordial nature that every human was created on, fitra, which is the, rec ca the capacity to recognize fat the Fatir, the creator of the heavens and earth. Every human being recognizes the creator. Every human being recognizes the creator. It's only a culture or a society that covers and corrupts the fitra. It blots out that light. But that light is inherent in every single human being, every Bani Adam, and every Bani Adam, it, that light is related to the light of Alastu bi Rabbikum, because every soul was uh, disembodied without the body, al arwah junudun mujannada, fama ta'arafa minha tala, fama tanakira min akhtala, in Sahih Bukhari, the, ro the souls and spirits are regimented like soldiers. At, at the moment of Alastu, before we were placed in this world, and that, that's why when we meet each other and there's a harmony of souls, it's because there was a proximity on that day. And if there's a dissonance, because there is a distance on that day. So the connection of souls, we meet people, there's like a vibe, the, that vibe of connectedness versus there's just a, it's not, it's, not, it's not connecting. That has to do with the moment of alastu when every single soul as a abd. So we all have this inherent ubudiyah, this capacity to, to realize our ubudiyah. Uh, because Allah Ta'ala asked, Alastu bi Rabbikum, am I not your Lord? 
Bala, every single soul said absolutely. So the the fitra, the, the Prophet drank milk, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What's amazing also about milk, milk is pure. It comes out pure. And we drink it and we drink it pure. It doesn't have to be you know, wine has to be like processed and uh, it fermented, all these things. The, the milk is pure. And also in the, in the authentic hadith, the Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab had dreamed that the Prophet Sallallahu with his blessed finger and milk is coming and he drinks it. And he, when he told the Prophet Sallallahu he says, Al-ilm, Al-ilm, knowledge, knowledge. So the uh, milk represents knowledge. So in the, in the text of the hadith, it represents fitra, primordial nature to recognize Allah's oneness. In the hadith of the dream of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, it represents knowledge. And so he drank from the milk and this is the guidance of our ummah because had he drank from the wine, the ummah would have been, there would have been great misguidance in the ummah. This ummah is guided. As a collective, this ummah is guidance. Uh, that my community will not agree on misguidance. And so uh, that then he enters the masjid, then 100, in the hadith, 124,000 prophets, alayhi wa 124,000 prophets, they're all there. He meets all the prophets, they pray, they put him in the front, now he's Im literally Imam al-Mursaleen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the prayer leader, he's the Imam, he's the head of all the prophets and messengers, alayhi wa sallam. So think back to Ta'if, you know, who's, are you going to put me in an adu with an adu with an enemy? Who's going to, are you going to put me to Allah Ta'ala before the divine meeting? You have all the prophets behind you, literally behind you, supporting you. And they were, they were awaiting him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every prophet, because with the covenant of Alastu, the prophets made a covenant, if the Rasul comes, that they would support him and believe in him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, the, the joy to meet the one, await, the awaited one, the paraclete, the intercessor, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he leads them in prayer, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, Jacob's ladder. Mi'raj is a ladder. Jacob's ladder, which by the prophets ascend into the heavens, and he goes, Sama al dunya, and each one, Jibreel Alaihi Wasallam, seeks permission and is granted permission because of the appointment. And Hazrat Musa was, he had to wait for the appointment and travel for the appointment to Tur Sina, to Mount Sinai, 40 days. And it was a difficult, difficult journey. Uh, because he, he was murid, he was seeking Allah. Our Prophet he's murad. There's no, there's, he's the one sought by Allah. He didn't have to go through any, like Allah opened the house with Jibreel. The roof was open, Jibreel Rasam comes with Buraq, it's time. Because he's sought by Allah. And so that, uh, so that then the Sama Dunya Hazrat uh, Adam salam, and Rahaba bihi, he greets him, Marhaban. He meets our forefather Adam, the father of all of humanity. Second heaven, the two cousins, Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad, the Yahya and Isa. Peace be upon them. Uh, Isa is Ruh Allah. So he's connected to life through spirit. And Yahya's name means life. So they're cousins. So there's a, there's a meaning of life in that second heaven. Uh, third heaven, Yusuf alayhi salam. And he was given Shatrul Husn. He was given half of beauty. Half of beauty. Hazrat Yusuf, the women cut their hands. Because of Yusuf alayhi salam. But our, 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 the ulama say our Prophet was given all of beauty. But Allah Ta'ala did not reveal it the way he did with others Yusuf because then no one would have been able to function. So it was matched, balanced with his Jalal. And then uh, a fourth heaven, Idris, Enoch alayhi salam. We raised him to a high sublime station. And then fifth heaven, Harun alayhi salam. And in some hadith, Harun also very handsome. He had a very handsome uh, presence, peace be upon him. And sixth heaven, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And seventh heaven, Ibrahim 
alayhi wasalam jami'an, resting his back on Bayt al-Ma'mur, and in the text of the hadith that 70,000 angels uh, come out of it every day and they don't return. And they're making the tawaf, the Bayt al-Ma'mur, and then Jibreel alayhi wasalam, up to the Sidrat al-Muntaha, the furthest low tree, and this is the end point of all knowledge. So beyond is just indescribable, it's not, it's indescribable, and Hazrat Jibreel cannot go. Jibreel alayhi salam, the supreme archangel that brings revelation down, cannot go. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam enters, and now, subhanallah asra, Allah is not located above, but whatever it means, in whatever way we can't imagine, he's in di the direct presence of Allah Ta'ala. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam on Mount Sinai is Kalimullah. He is spoken to directly in a, mis in a s mysterious way. And the, the most pleasurable thing is to hear, the, sound, the, the most pleasurable hearing is to hear the words of Allah Ta'ala. He's Kalimullah. He asked to see Allah. Rabbi Arini Andur Ilaik in Al A'raf. So Allah Ta'ala, it was not destined for Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. So he lost consciousness when Allah Tajalla lil Jabal, Allah manifested to the mountain. He lost consciousness, peace be upon him. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu according to Ibn Abbas, Ra'aytu Rabbi. That night I saw my Lord. He's the only one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this life to be honored, not just hearing the speech of Allah, to have vision of Allah Ta'ala. This is, and this is the most uh, pleasurable experience possible. And this is the supreme gift in Jannah, after all the other delights are experienced, and the Allah Taala asks the people of Jannah, Allah Jannah min ahl Jannah. Allah Taala asks them, "Are you pleased? Is there anything more?" They say, "What else could we ask for? We have all these. We've been forgiven. We, you've given us your rahma. Your, we have all these delights. Is there anything more? Is there anything more?" Then, the veils are lifted, and the people will behold their Lord. But our Prophet ﷺ in this life is granted it. ﷺ. La ilaha illallah. ﷺ. And then he's given the prayers, as salat. Amazing. And it's 50. And so he comes down. And on the way down, Hazrat Musa ﷺ has the conversation. What did your Lord instruct you? And when he hears it's 50, he has experience dealing with an ummah that doesn't comply, he says, ask your Lord to go back, intercede, ask to make it lighter. And so and then the Prophet goes back, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it re reduced by five each time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes back, Hazrat Musa still, ask him, make it lighter, ask him, make it lighter. He keeps on going back until it's five prayers a day, and then he says, I'm shy to go ask to again. So it's five, but it counts as 50 because every good deed is multiplied times 10. So it's as if we're praying 50 times a day when we do the five, the five obligatory prayers. The, some of the ulama of Ishara, of the inward, they say the Hazrat Musa, because the nur in the Prophet's face, وسلم, it's so naturally nurani, but imagine after the vision of Allah, the intensity, it's reflecting the nur of... <laughs> so Hazrat Musa, that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. So now he's saying, no, go back. Ask for lighter. He just wants to see the face. The more of that light. It's bringing that light. They're reflecting the light of Allah Ta'ala. So this is our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And so, amazingly, in the next ayah, وَآتَيْنَا مُوسَ kitab. You see, Hazrat Musa is connected to this Amazing event. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam has a significant role. Peace, be, peace and blessings be upon him. And we granted Moses the book, the Torah. And we made it a guidance for the Israelites. Look at the, what's the salient mes message that Allah Ta'ala brings out with respect to the guidance of the Torah for Bani Israel and therefore the Quranic guidance for us. Do not take a wakil other than Allah. And our Prophet, go back to Ta'if, he was the perfect exemplar of tawakkul ala Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And some of the ancient scriptures said, 
it, uh, that the Bani Israel had was Sammaituka al Mutawakkil. I named you al Mutawakkil. That's one of his names. According to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, in the authentic hadith, that the Bani Israel and the Israel, they had this description Sammaituka al Mutawakkil. What's the, the meaning that Allah brings out of the Torah? The, at the heart of the Torah for Bani Israel, Don't take a wakil other than me. So, tawakkul and tafweed wa ufawidu amri ilallah. And this is what the Prophet did in every event of the seerah, sallallahu alayhi wa but especially at this time, right before Isra al Miraj, he gave his affair to Allah. Wa ufawidu amri ilallah. And, and uh, one of the great imams of our tradition, Abu Amr ibn Nujayd. Abu Amr ibn Nujayd was one of the great great shuyukh of Nishapur of the 3rd century, Imam Dhahabi praises him, he says he was Sheikh, Muhaddith, Imam, you know, he was a major, major master of our tradition. Ibn Nujayd, rahimahullah, was once asked uh, by a student, Mat tawakkul, what is tawakkul? What does it mean to take Allah as your wakil? And he said, Adnahu husnadhan billahi ta'ala. Adnahu husna dhan billahi ta'ala. The very least of it is to have a beautiful, beautiful opinion of Allah Ta'ala. It begins with husna dhan. It begins with the beautiful opinion of Allah Ta'ala. And uh, another great master of Nishapur of that time, Abu Uthman al Hiyari, he says, At tafweed raddu ma jahilta ila alimihi. He says, Consigning your affair to Allah is to give what you do not know back to the knower. Is to give what you do not understand back to the omniscient. Raddu ma jahilta ila alimihi. Wa tafweed muqaddimatu rida. And he says tafweed, consignment is the precursor to rida, contentment. Wa rida babullah al azam. And rida is the supreme door to Allah. Rida is the supreme door to Allah Ta'ala. And so this principle of tafweed, Allah tattakhidu min duni wakila. And then Allah Ta'ala in the third ayah, ذُرِّيَةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوحِ This is munada, O progeny, because the Bani Israel are being addressed here, O progeny of those that we carried with Noah. So connecting, again, Allah is connecting everything to earlier prophets, just like on that night, the Prophet met Nuh amongst all the prophets, peace be upon them. ذُرِّيَةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوحِ The O progeny that we carried with Nuh in the ark. إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا shakura Abd, again. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا shakura It's amazing. Ubudiya, slavehood. And verily, Nuh was a, an, an ever grateful slave. Abdan Shakura. Shakur is higher than Shakir. Shakir is grateful. Shakur is intensely grateful. And the, the Mufassirin, they say about Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, إِذَا أَكَلْ حَمِدَ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا شَرِبْ حَمِدَ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا لَبِسْ حَمِدَ اللَّهِ Whenever he ate something, he said, Alhamdulillah. Whenever he drank something, Alhamdulillah. Whenever he donned a garment, Alhamdulillah. Again, it's the oxygen of the people who know Allah. It's the oxygen of the people who know Allah. And that shukr, that uh, Hakim al-Tirmidhi said, a shukr ta'alluq al-qalb bil-mun'im. A shukr ta'alluq al-qalb bil-mun'im. Shukr is for the heart to be connected to the giver. And this is what the Prophet that night, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma zagha al-basur wa ma tagha, his eyes didn't even waver, they didn't go astray, because ta'alluq al-qalb bil-mun'im. Shukr is, is the heart to be connected to, to, the, to the giver. And so, uh, ultimately, that's what the Salat is. The Salat is the expression of Shukr. The prayer is the expression of Shukr. What was the Prophet given that night, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Salat. What's our ibadah that encapsulates all of these meanings? A Salat. It's, it encapsulates all these meanings. It's the way we show gratitude to Allah. It's the way we trust Allah. It's the way we raddu ma jahilta ila alamihi. It's the way we consign our affair to Allah. Wa ufawdu amri ila Allah. It's the way we supplicate to Allah. It's the way we express our slavehood to Allah. Every virtue, the way we, how did, what, how, what's the translation of it? The salat. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
You see, the my supreme joy, the delight of my heart, the delight of my eye, the same eye that saw Allah, the same eye that saw Allah, the, the, the deepest joy of that blessed eye, sallallahu alayhi wa in the prayer. So it's a sunnah for us not just to pray, but iqamat salah And iqamat salah is to work at it until it's the delight of our heart. That's a paradigm shift. That's a paradigm shift. It's not just taking a break from, it's not just putting a pause on dunya to do this obligation. This is like, just get dunya out of the way. What else is left? Hurry up, just get it out of the way. And the heart goes to its delight. And uh, the, the qurta'ayn, this is, we should, we, should, we should seek this, aspire that the delight of our heart is the prayer. And therefore, by extension, any remembrance of Allah Ta'ala and that, one of the great early Imams, Yahya ibn Mu'adh al-Razi, he says, Man surra bi khidmatillah, whoever's joy is in the service of Allah, surat al-ashya kulluha bi khidmatihi. All things will be joyed to, to serve that person. Wa man qarrat aynuhu billah, and whoever's ever the delight of their eye is Allah himself, qarrat uyun kulli shay bin nadhari ilayh. The eyes of every single thing will find their delight in looking at that person. And that's our Prophet ﷺ. His joy was to serve Allah. All of creation is so... What an honor for us today to do anything small for the Prophet ﷺ. What an honor. What a joy. And any small khidmah we can do for him ﷺ. Because his joy was serving Allah. And then think of the joy of seeing the Prophet ﷺ. Think of the joy, because his joy was seeing Allah, his, the, the, the uh, a delight of his eye was Allah, so the delight of eye of creation is to see the Prophet And that's in the greatest, the greatest of, uh, of the Ummah, they, Allah gives them vision of the Prophet in the dream, it's a true dream, or if it's seen for someone, and some even have it, <coughs> the ruh can have it while awake, so there's wonders of this. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us realized in these meanings. We ask Allah Ta'ala that we fulfill the, <coughs> the way of our Prophet وسلم, in our own limited, weak context that Allah Ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to be true heirs of his way, to be true, to be true people of ittiba of the Rasul وسلم, true wholehearted, deep following and emulation of the Blessed Messenger وسلم, outwardly in the way we are, inwardly in the way we are and we ask Allah Ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to make khidmah of Allah and His Messenger we ask Allah Ta'ala to give us the tawfiq that the qurut al-ayn, that the delight of our eyes and the delight of our souls is in Allah and His Messenger وسلم.